Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight, we are joined by American country and hip hop rapper, you don't often hear that, Adam Calhoun. Adam, welcome to the show. Uh, we're so happy to have you with us. Um, you are a little bit of everything, I gotta say. For people that don't know you, they need to check out your music because your music is awesome. And I find that um, the lyrics have so much meaning. I feel like so many of your songs, I, I, every time I hear them, I like learn a little bit more and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's right. But tell me a little bit just about you. You have such a big following now. You are, you know, a, a musician. Um, you have a rap career now. But tell me about who was Adam Calhoun before all this happened. How did all of this happen? Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for saying all those things. I really appreciate it. Um, how did all this happen? <laughs> how did this happen? What happened? Uh, I mean, you, so I'm, I'm from the Midwest, uh, 20 miles south of Chicago. I grew up uh, in, in the trades and, and, and working. Um, and, you know, I was working at an old refinery plant. Uh, I was raising my son. I, I, got, I had just gotten home from prison, which I know that sounds crazy. But, yeah, I have actually... Um, and I turned my whole life around. I gave my whole life to my my child, you know, as far as making sure that he was brought up the right way. It was just me and him. Um, I, I thought I would work till I was old and die in that plant, you know, like all the other guys before me. And one day I made a viral video just about uh, today's generation versus, you know, my generation. And, and it just exploded. And I just kept making funny videos, uh, you know, some some political, some making fun of liberals, of course, uh, who doesn't like doing that? Uh, so easy. And, yeah, it's very, very easy. Uh, and just making videos that our everyday life that we went through and into a, a comedic kind of, you know, when, when you were, this is five, six years ago. So this is when you were actually able to uh, have a little more breathing room and, right. and, and push the envelope a little more. And we just made a lot of videos and it went crazy viral uh but rewind 20 years i was already doing music but nothing ever happened um and i got this big platform that i built and i just said i'm gonna start putting out music see what happens and then the music took off and uh my son went to the military um he just got home he served uh just you know he did a three-year contract he was army airborne infantry um nice. and he's home now and i feel a lot better with him being home and uh we're just just keep moving along you know social media is a crazy thing and uh, a lot of what's happening now in social media is very crazy from my career it sounds so crazy to say from social media when it first started to now i cannot believe i i just can't believe nothing is acceptable anymore anything you say offends oh everybody and uh you can't even tell a joke anymore without offending so yeah i mean you could tell someone you love them and have a great day and they will find something to complain no, about totally that. believe me nobody knows yeah. better than, than we yeah. do about that um you're totally right but by the way just to get back to sort of how you how you kind of gained all this following on social media even back, you know, a number of years ago when you first started posting this stuff, I mean, doesn't it speak to the fact that people are just so sick of the PC culture that so many people wanted to follow you, so many people wanted to watch your videos? And it also, I feel like, Adam, is the reason so many people loved Donald Trump because, God, aren't we so tired of comedians not being funny anymore, uh, music having no meaning, everybody being canceled? Like, what is there? What's left? Everything is canceled because somebody, you're right, will find some way to be offended by it. But even back then, I feel like people must have been yearning, and I feel like we were yearning for just like real people and people to say things that we were all thinking, but nobody wanted to speak out on. Um, right. Don't you think that that's probably part of the reason that you, you ended up gaining so much following? So, yes, I think it was like a fresh of breath. Of, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. How do you say it? A, a breath, breath of fresh, of fresh air. air. Yeah. <laughs> to, to the American people to see, wait a minute, this is a normal, regular, average, everyday guy who thinks like I think. And but the media keeps showing me all this, you know, this stuff. I mean, that's all they show. This guy's just what I want to say, but I can't say because I might get fired. My children might be treated differently in schools. Um, you know, my, my neighbor, you know, things like that. So this is great. I get to watch this guy, what I believe in. And he's just like, they identify with me because I am that. I come from the blue collar, middle class, 
you know, hardworking, true grit of, of our country. And, uh, you know, I, I was putting it all out there for them to see the good, the bad of my, my, myself, my personal, actual everyday life. I was putting it out there for everyone. And, you know, and it was my opinion. And it, it's one, the one thing Donald Trump did that, that I love is he said it with his chest and he, he said it with conviction. And what he did was he triggered something in the American people that they haven't felt in so long, which was pride in our country. Right. Right. Gosh. I mean, isn't it true? Wouldn't we like just a little bit of that right now, uh, given the current situation of things happening? But just to get back for a quick moment to really yep. what, what you were talking about earlier with the censorship on social media, I can tell you this show, The Right View, we are censored up the wazoo on all the different outlets. And I mean, they do everything they can to make sure that people can't see this show because I feel like any opinion that differs from that of the elites, um, they just want to silence totally. They don't want you to have a voice out there. They don't want you to have a following. They label things as controversial for different reasons. We're not doing anything crazy and controversial. We're just allowing people to talk and, and give their opinions and thoughts on things on this show. So to all the, the viewers, all the listeners, I want to tell you, make sure you subscribe to our, our podcast. Make sure you subscribe at therightview.com because otherwise a lot of people won't see this show, but that is their goal. And, and I feel like uh, for people like you, Adam, the, you know, the reason that you are doing what you do, I think, in, in one sense, is to encourage other people, right, to speak their minds. you got to get out there. I've seen some of your videos where you tell people, like, it's on you. Nobody's going to do stuff for you. You need to get out there, put in the work, and if you have something you feel passionately about, go after it, do it. Um, but they don't want people to get that message, right, because they ultimately want people to be reliant on the government fully. They want to implement socialism and ultimately communism, I believe, in America. So that requires nobody having accountability, nobody doing things for themselves. Um, but is that part of the reason? I mean, that's sort of always your message is like, you have to go after what, what you want. Nobody's going to do it for you. So, okay. <laughs> There's a lot to break down there. So There's a lot going on here. I have a lot of yeah. thoughts and I'm very passionate okay. about many things. It's so am I, so am I. So what I think we as Americans need to start doing is stop complying with things that are wrong and start standing up for things that are right. You know what I mean? Like, and yes. and it's going to take more people to speak out and more people to get involved in the community, more people to, people are scared. And that's because that's what the media is pushing. They're pushing fear, right? Uh, they're pushing, wear yeah. a mask, stay away from each other. Get wear a mask shot. outside do... now in Oregon. Yeah, what it's... are we talking about? Oh my well, God. Oregon, Oregon's a it's terrible lost. state as far it's as just politicians lost. go. It's over. Yes. Um, I feel like <laughs> a lot of these politicians also uh, belong in the very prisons that they built. I think they've done more uh, wrong to the American people than anyone has. Uh, not all but there's a lot of politicians like Joe Biden himself that needs to be probably put in an island somewhere by himself and just he see won't a Joe. Even know. He, Adam, he won't even no, know. No, he wouldn't he know. Sent he sent him somewhere, right? He wouldn't know. But, but, but the thing is, is, the main thing is this. The thing that the media is doing is, is it's controlled by one side. And once you keep pushing that same side, and that's the only thing that you see, you start to believe it. You start right. to you start to be scared, and you start to comply. It's just like the radio. If they play the same songs all the time, sooner or later, you're going to be like, oh, you're, you're going to yeah. know Even if you hate them. God, you're so right. There's so many songs. I'm like, this is horrible. And then it's the yeah. eight millionth time I've heard it, and I'm like singing along. I didn't even know I knew it. Yeah. You're right. It's that's just, how it happens. Program there, and, and uh, so I was I was at the gym the other day. Real quick, I'm at the gym. I'm, I'm leaving. I, I get my little... A little shake. I'm leaving, and there's a high school girl working behind the counter that made it and gave it to me. I say, can I ask you something? Are you in high school? Yes. Okay. Do you think that these kids want to wear masks? And she said, uh, I don't know. I think it's 50-50. I think a lot of the, it has a lot to do with the, the news and the parents. And then she said, I don't want to wear a mask. And she said, you know what happened? The first day, she did not know who I was also, which was great because it was just a, it was a nice conversation. And she said yeah. this. She said, um, I was my first day of class in every single room and teacher that I went to, they all began 
uh, class asking what we would like to be called as for, far as our pronouns. Now, oh my, my son just graduated high school four years ago, and that, that wasn't happening. And that was just four years ago. So we, what we're seeing is an accelerating, accelerated, uh, just uh, 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 making men feminine, uh, uh, just taking yeah. all the, the, the pride, the masculinity. You know, if you're, if you're especially if you're, and I, I, maybe I'll catch some shit for this, but I don't really care. But if you are a white, straight, Christian male yeah you're the uh, worst you of the worst the problem yeah yeah, yeah. so exactly it's a, it's a very scary then now you got if you are proud american you love your country they're trying to make it look like you're kind of like a you're a terrorist or a threat you know what i mean oh yeah no and, no, no, no. excuse it, me anybody that voted for donald trump is is considered according to what i have recently heard from the biden administration we're all basically domestic terrorists didn't you know yeah. that i mean what are we talking oh. about here I'd it's rather crazy. be, I, 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 you know, I don't know what happened. What happened? You know what happened? We gave the government too much control and we gave the wrong people in the government right. too much control. Or did, yeah. did we give it to them? I or think they just over it? years just took it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but what, what, you know, the average American doesn't understand politics. They understand I got to go to work and put food on the table, you know, before you know it. Yeah. They've taken all your money uh, and they're telling you now what to do and how to how to what how to do it to yourself, to your body. There's no more freedom. Freedom of speech on on, on social media is a joke. There's no such yeah. thing as freedom Forget of speech it. on social media. Everything's censored. And and if we don't be careful, we are on a slippery slope as far as getting our more rights. I should say this, getting rights taken away. Uh, and, and if that starts to happen, then this country turns into North Korea, China. Uh, that's I think that's what the liberals want to do is like make America North Korea again. You know, right. something like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who wouldn't love to live uh, under the role of Kim Jong-un? It sounds like yeah, a great like, time. That's ultimately what they want. But I, I have to ask you this, Adam. I feel like you are so you're right. There are so many people that don't um, politics is not their life. For me, it has become my life. By default, it never was yeah. for any of us in the Trump family. Before June of 2015, when my father-in-law came down, the golden escalator, we all know what happened next. Um, but for so many people, you're right. People are, it's kind of on the periphery. You don't really infuse yourself in it. But I think that more and more people are starting to pay attention. Since Donald Trump was president, more people are starting to pay attention. He certainly woke a lot of people up in this country who were just kind of going through the motions, going through everyday life, trying to just, you know, get through the day, go to work, get your kid to school, pick them up from school, make dinner, get everybody, you know, their homework done and get them in bed, like, and do it all the next day. People just wanted to get that done. But then, then something happened, I feel like, when Donald Trump became president or was at least running for president and throughout his presidency up until now, because a lot of people have learned they've gotten a real civics lesson from Donald Trump, or, or at least the surrounding chaos around Donald Trump. Um, but I want to ask you, because you said that you you started making music, you know, like 20 years ago or something, or you were interested in it. How about the politics? Did it just sort of happen that you, are you one of those people that it just sort of like, you started paying more attention? Were you always political? Because you really, I mean, you really understand it and you know, you know what you're talking about. So, first, I want to say this: What other president in your lifetime and my lifetime have you ever seen that's not the president and is still holding rallies and <laughs> thousands, tens of thousands of people right. are showing up? What other president do you still see their signs and their flags hanging in these right. people's front yard? That's never happened because he woke up. The American people and gave us a sense of pride. But as far as I go and and politics, I didn't get interested in politics and and our government and laws and things like that until I lost my freedom. When I went to, uh, you know, I did two years in prison for fighting. I, I was I grew up a tough guy, you know, I, and I spent a lot of time trying to figure it out. And a lot of that time, I took the wrong road. And you know, I I, I got into a lot of fights at the bars being a, a young guy, and uh, that landed me up, you know, with a couple of batteries which I am not proud of, but I will say this, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it woke me up, number one. And number two, it showed me no matter what happens, if you live in this country, every day that you wake up, you wake up with a chance to succeed, right? 
And, yeah. and that's what I did. I got home. I got my son. I started in my brother's basement, walking to work and worked my way to where I am now. I'm very fortunate to have a lot of successful companies, a, su um, a successful career. And um, the day I walked out of that plant in, in, in the union that I was in, the Teamsters Union, uh, a lot of the guys, you know, thought I'd be back. You know, this is just going to this is going to be like a thing that's over real quick. And uh, I've made a, one hell of a career and an impact, I believe, uh, in this you know country that we live in that I love so much. But I started thinking about politics and government when I lost my freedom. And people wow. don't understand how good they have it until you don't have anything. That's and, true. and when you go to prison, you don't have anything. I learned the most there about myself, about our country and where you, where, how low at the bottom of the barrel you can get for making shitty decisions and how high at the top of the chart and the mountain you can get by making good decisions and working your ass off. Hard work, not giving up, not settling for being mediocre. Yeah, and by the way, I, I saw a video that you did where you kind of talk generally about, about that sentiment. I feel like the the culture today and i'm i'm working overtime to make sure that my kids who are now two and almost four do not fall into this trap everybody just wants the quick and easy fix right they want everything to just happen for them but nobody wants to put in the hard work i'll tell you real quick i i've played like every sport under the sun the toughest coach i ever had was my cheerleading coach in high school her name was ruby sutton and she I mean, worked our asses off. I will never forget the kind of work that I had to put in to be on that team. And I'll tell you, I, I tried out for the JV team one year. I got cut. I did not make the JV team. So you know what? I went back and I worked so hard over the next year mm. that I made varsity the next year. Yeah. And I got to tell you something. That is a lesson. And, and I mean, I had parents who instilled great worth, work ethic and work values, et cetera, in me. But today's generation, I'm very worried. They just think everything happens for them. But in some sense, I feel like that is the message that is being disseminated by the government. When you still have people, Adam, who are being paid to stay home from work, where you have reliance on the government in, in so many ways, and especially the Democrats having them in power, they want more of that. They want more people to rely on them. They want fewer people to actually take uh, you know, anything uh, under their own wing and do it and put the work in behind it. I'm so glad to hear you preaching that message because I really think that that is so, so important. And you should know, by the way, I, I want to talk really quick and brag on you because your album, your debut album, actually, Americal, it came out in 2018. It debuted number one on iTunes yeah. and took the number one spot on eight billboard charts for several weeks. Did you expect that to happen? Were you shocked? What was that like? No, of course. No, I did not expect that to happen. And and when it did happen, uh, I still didn't know how to take that, right? Um, you work so hard for certain things in life that you think are unachievable. And once you achieve them, you kind of don't know how to... You thought it was impossible. So then when you're there, it's like... It, it, I don't know how to register in that my, my mind, especially for working my whole life clocking yeah. in and then for this to happen things like that to happen over and over uh just putting in that work ethic from the blue collar to this industry that i'm in now outworking everyone is is my goal uh and for that to happen no i still to this day don't it's it's kind of unbelievable so i kind of just go about my life and keep working keep pushing myself so i don't ever fall back uh it's it's unacceptable outwork everyone uh, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. You, you understand these things, right? But totally. one thing that you one thing that you said that was beautiful, uh, even though it was a cheerleader analogy, it was beautiful. <laughs> you didn't you didn't make the cut? So yeah, that forced you to work harder. Without that, there is no Michael Jordans. There isn't Absolutely. the greatest people that ever lived in this world. Do Without you know failure, that? I went to Michael Jordan's high school, the gymnasium that the cheerleading tryouts were in, Adam. It's called the Michael J. Jordan Gymnasium. The irony. And yeah. look at me today. I was a yeah. varsity cheerleader at Lanny High School. But but you're right. that There are more people that, I mean, failure is a part of life. And it, it is an important part of life. Because without those failures and without those situations where 
you you don't succeed, you don't have somebody there to coddle you and give it to you and serve it up on a silver platter, you don't learn from that. You don't learn how hard you can ultimately work. And by the way, how amazing it feels when you actually achieve your goal on the other end of all of that hard work. It's so much more fulfilling to, to work hard for something than if somebody just like hands it to you, you know? So yes. I, I love, I love your stance on that. And I can, I'm sure your son has the same values. Are you about to have another baby, by the way? Yeah. I, <gasps> I, did, I was like, oh my God, I have to start over again. And I said, okay, for, for years, I'm like, I'm not starting over again. And then <laughs> I said, um, okay, okay, let's let's do it. And, uh, and, and, and I'm very excited because, you know, when I had my son, that's another thing. You're talking to a guy that made a lot of wrong choices in my life and still made it to where I am today. And it's not because of my complexion of my skin. It's because of the drive and the work ethic that was instilled in me and the refusing to give up. And that's what you just said was another great point, failure. Today, in today's society, we have, peop we have two types of people. People, you're going to fail in life. That's the best thing in the world to happen yep. to you. Now, other people fail and they accept that and that's where they stay. Other people fail, they use that as gas and they to push them further and they become the most successful people in the world. Um, and now I'm starting over as a much older man uh, who's been through a lot in life, who's got a 21 year old son and I'm having a little baby girl. Uh, a, good, a good quote is, uh, for the world could not soften you so God sent a baby girl. So, oh my yeah. God. It's so true. It's so true. And having one of each myself, I can tell you that is the truth. When is, uh, when is she, when are we going to see her sometime next month? Right? Yeah. So I'm born in September and, and she, her birthday, Happy early is, birthday. Thank you. And, and, and she's due in September. So I'm very excited about that. my, my son's birthday is September 12th. So I'm going to awesome. keep fingers crossed for, for that one. We'll see what happens. Well, That's very amazing. exciting stuff. Yes, um, in case people don't know as well, which I'm, I'm sure so many do, you also sell like a ton of awesome merchandise and it's really, really cool. Where can people go to see your merchandise? Uh, acalclothing.com. Um, okay. It's, I mean, real easy. Everyone calls me Acal. Uh, it's just my, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It's just Should I have been calling you Acal the whole time? I'm just like ruining no, the no, whole it's thing. Just people, they, they, <laughs> people who really been following me since the, the whole journey started six years ago, you know, that's what, and that's what the clothing is. It's Acal clothing. Uh, and for a new company, we, we are crushing it. I'm very proud of all the guys um, and, and the men and women that, that we employ. And uh, that's another thing. We will never be, I'm never going to make any of my employees do the vaccination or I, I'm going to let them oh choose God. what they would like to do. You know, I imagine, like to that, imagine allowing people the choice. I yeah. mean, what are we talking about? This is America, Adam. Yeah. This is America. Yeah. People should choose what they want to put in their body. I don't, I don't get it. The problem is we've given, not we, we haven't given. What, what the problem is the people that took over media, social media, everything that pumps out news, the people that have the smallest, should have the smallest voice, have the largest voice. That's true. That's the, the, the people that the people that actually represent probably the fewest uh, people out there in the country are the ones that have the bullhorn and are shouting the loudest. I have to ask you this about your merchandise, though, because I noticed online you have a really nice T-shirt. It's called it says Adam Calhoun 24. So yeah. if my father in law decides he's going to run in 24, do I need to let him know? that he has competition. What, I mean, what are we going to do about this? I don't, I don't know how this is going to go down. So yeah, that's a complicated question. <laughs> so, okay. When I say I'm running for president, to me, that doesn't sound like a joke, right? When Donald Trump said that he, he was going to run for president, all the politicians think, yeah. oh, this is a joke. If yeah, you, totally. not gonna, I understand I come from an era where they said you could be an astronaut, you could be a doctor, you could be the president of the United States of America, right? And through my life, I thrive off of people doubting what I'm capable of. Yes, I would love to be the president of the United States of America. Uh, running against Donald Trump would be very difficult. <laughs> Uh, well, he uh, hasn't announced anything yet, so I don't want to. I don't want to get ahead happen, of myself. If it did happen, I would. I would. I would give him a hell of a run and at least uh, shake his hand. If 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 he, uh, I would hope I would find a nice place around 
uh, to help. I want at the end of the day, I want to help my country. That's I it. know that's you. what I want. Have do. you met my father-in-law, by the way? No, ma'am. No, I have okay. not. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna make sure that that ultimately happens because I feel like this is it's it's gotta happen. I mean, hello. We we have to. You have a picture behind you in this room of of Donald Trump yeah. anyway. So like. Like, and what's in this room, by the way? Can we just talk really quick about what's going on in there? Because there's a lot happening, and I'm really into it. Uh, hey, Justin, will you grab this for me real quick, the, the flag? I'll show you. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I'll try to give you a, a quick little. Just a brief rundown. I'll I see we got Mike Tyson, which one of your dogs yeah. is named after, right? This, this is one of my favorite things I got. Uh, this was presented to me at one of my shows. Oh. Um, yeah, um, it was a, they flew a flag and playing some of my music. Um, it was aboard an AC 130U. It was called Spooky. It was a gunship, and uh, they they flew flew a flag, this flag for me, playing my music. Oh my uh, gosh! Overseas, yeah, and it, they cool. presented that to me. Uh, we got Mike Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's who? When I was a kid, I was just fascinated by him because he was just such a scary, like powerful force. Uh, we have. You know, the first rap album I ever bought when I was a kid. I have all these paintings for me. We got uh, Jesus with, with, with a pistol. <laughs> I see you're a Gangs of New York fan. I love Bill the Butcher, uh, my son's army photo. Another folded flag that was presented to me. Uh, my grandfather, who without him, I would not. Uh, Leonard Calhoun. I would not have, I would not be who I am today. Um, my favorite boots, Made in America. We have the man himself uh, that's moving <laughs> up into another room, my actual office at the shop. Um, oops, sorry. So cool. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot happening had, in there. I had all these paintings painted for me, and I, I had to get the Trump. I had it embossed in a gold leaf frame from a museum I bought. And, uh, yeah, I, I had, I had wow. a buddy of mine who's an amazing artist paint that, and um, that's going into the my um, – office at the shop so oh great yeah it's well been a, i mean you have i mean there's there's a lot there are a lot of layers there but obviously that's that's what makes you you and that's why you do the things you do you make the music you do you've been inspired by so much of you know what you have in that room there the the last thing that i have to ask about because i am a crazy dog lady i noticed oh, yeah. some dogs can we just talk about it's real so quick cool. your dogs because i also i'm a huge huge pit bull fan i think yeah. it's such a bad rap i think that the, the the media by and large has just demonized them the same way quite frankly that they've demonized trump supporters my father-in-law all of us um and they've tried to sell a message that they're they're bad and crazy tell me about your dogs what's going on there so i have a dog named sugar and i named him sugar because he was just a scary <laughs> scary looking dog but i rescued him uh because i oh. had a dog named tyson that was named after mike tyson i was on tour and uh, while I was gone, unfortunately, he he I got hit by a car. Oh um, so when he passed, I was like, I'm going to adopt a dog and I'm going to save a dog. Rescuing and dogs is the greatest uh, ever. Smoke. Yeah. Uh, <gasps> Look right there. Oh, so, my gosh. Look yeah, at these is, babies. Is, that's that that's a big guy right there. That's Smokey. Okay. Uh, he's, he's like a gray dog. And then the other one, he's a black uh, dog. His name's Sugar. They're both pit bulls. One's a rescue. One uh, I bought, and I've had them for four years now, and they're I love them. They go oh, a lot of places with me. They've been on the tour buses and the office, and I take them everywhere with me. All right. Well, when we meet in person one one day, I'm gonna just request a, a meet and greet with your dogs as well because yes, that's how that's how I like to get down. All right. Last question I have to ask you. I ask everybody. Adam, tell me what you think the best part of America is and what you think is the biggest threat to the future of our country. Oh, whoa. Well, the best part is easy. The, the, okay. Okay. The best part of our country is that we're free, that we have freedom to choose, freedom of speech. Um, we have, we're not, there's so many people that want to come to this country because they have a chance to make something of their life. You have our border crisis. So many people are trying to get in this country for, for through refuge or for work purposes just to better their life. Every day you wake, wake up in this country, you have a chance, right? In some countries, you don't have a chance. In this country, it gives you the chance to better your life. 
to make a good life for yourself. That is the best thing about this country. We are free and we have chances to make our lives better, right? Yeah. The thing that is the scariest thing that could be happening in our country is <sighs> Joe Biden. <laughs> Right. I mean, uh, what's going on in Afghanistan is an absolute joke. The, the thing that the thing that's the scariest thing is you're taking men, women, the strength of our country and trying to demonize them and make you're trying to make our country weak, soft, even our military. Things have changed so much in the military as far as training and things like this. My son said, I don't want to be in the army anymore. It's 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 getting to be a joke now. You know, if they try to start so saying our, if they start taking away our freedoms and, and, and it's going to get really bad. I think, I think the worst thing that ever happened to this country was the white liberal period. The best thing that's happened to this country is every day you wake up, you have a chance to make your life better and your family's life better. And you can live a nice free life, free, breathe free, move freely, talk freely, be a proud American. That's the best thing about this country. And I, and I love it waking up every day knowing that I am in the best country in the world. There's nowhere else where you have the opportunity every day to change your life. You could decide tomorrow morning when you wake up, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to go for my goals. I'm going to do, there's, there's nowhere else that allows you to do it quite like the United States of America, at least currently. And we have to protect that. And we have to make sure that that is always paramount to who we are as a country and who we are as people. Because when we lose that, when that's gone, this country is over. Very, very well said. Adam, I, I know we got a lot of fans out there. Um, what's coming down the pipe? Are you touring? We got new music. What's going on with you? They'll, they'll hear it. When I start sending out you know, my stories and, and stuff like that, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. We got albums I'm working on. Uh, we'll be touring after the baby's born. I want to take some time to just stay home, but next year, yes. April, we'll be out, we'll be out touring. Um, right now I, I just am really enjoying being at home, uh, kind of social, social media distancing myself. Sometimes <laughs> I like to take breaks from that because it's so, I don't know why, by the way, it's really yeah. important. I think it's so much poison is put out there that it's, so oh. you know, they keep talking about all this misinformation. The people that are putting out the most misinformation is the, is, is the people behind social media and the news. But I'm just trying to relax and, and, and try and hope, pray that the, the world turns around in the country. It's not just our country. It's the whole world. Things that are happening in yeah. Australia and other countries. But um, down the pipelines, man, you just you can see me always wherever I am and come up and say hello. And I'm always going to be preaching the same uh, word as long as they let me. And uh, I just, you know, in my life where I am right now, I'm finding peace and I'm very happy. Uh, and and I, I just look forward to the future. And, and I hope I can play a part in, in being an average middle American guy that can bring this country its balls back. <laughs> you're doing it, by the way. It's happening. I mean, yeah, you're well, playing a bigger part than, than you think. So, I mean, keep it up. Keep up the music. Keep up you know, t talking about the things that you do, because I think it's it's very impactful. Um, good luck with the baby. We hope to Thank see um, see her debut on social media at some point, because that's how I'll see her, at least until I mean in person and totally harass her dogs. Um, <laughs> but Adam Calhoun, thank you so much for joining us here on The Right View. And to everybody at home, as always, thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View.